guys, it's Dan here. In this week's episode, let's talk about why currencies fluctuate. So it's gonna be a beginner's guide because currencies are super complex to understand, but I will try to make it as simple as possible using the example of the US dollars compared to the Euro. Um, and I will give you the main reasons and each time using this example of US dollar versus Euro to illustrate the main reasons. That being said, ladies and gentlemen, Let's get started. Before we talk about the main reasons why currencies fluctuate between each other, let's set up the example. Um, so in this case, I have one US dollar and I want to know how many euros I get. In this case, and uh, look at the directions, it's very important. In this case, for one US dollar, I get 84 euro cents. That means that if I sell 100 US dollars, I get 84 euros, okay? So uh, you always have to, you are always checking a pair of currencies, US dollar versus Euro, but the direction also is very important because uh, in the other way, one Euro gives me $1.20 US dollars, okay? So in this case, in the second case, if I sell 100 Euros, I get 120 US dollars. So the direction is very important, of course. Uh, what is very important to point out as well as when we look at the US dollar versus Euro, we are, uh, these two currencies are not pegged against each other. That means they, ha they do not have a fixed rate. Okay? That means uh, both currencies are floating currencies, which means that the rates uh, are, calculate on, are calculated on a daily or even on, a, on a, an hourly basis, basically, and which means that the rates change all the time. The most important reason why currencies fluctuate is supply and demand. So this is one of the most elementary and important um, concepts in, in economics to understand. So I will quickly showcase you how it works because supply and demand is super important to understand to understand the price uh, fluctuation. So imagine my demand is going up and my supply is stable that means that my price will go up. The best example for this is real estate, for example, everything related to housing. Um, my demand for housing is going up. Everybody wants to own its own house. Everybody wants to buy a property, so huge demand. Supply is stable because uh, companies and countries are not building enough. That's why the price of real estate is going cra up crazy. On the other side, if demand stays the same but the supply is going up the price will go down the best example is everything related to basic technology um, demand is roughly the same for for smartphones uh, supply of smartphones is going up crazy with all the new suppliers of Ch in china and all that stuff so the price the average price of smartphones is going down okay so now what does it mean for our currencies here. For our currencies, it's a little bit more complicated and I will show you in the example why. But now that you know how supply and demand works, let's look at the example. Now, uh, again, here in my example, I for one US dollar, I get 84 euro cents, okay? Right now, so what does it mean? Imagine uh, we are in a very simple world and you can only have one currency, okay? That means if I buy, if I want to buy US dollars, I have to sell Euro. And on the other way, if I want to, if, you, if I want to own or if I want to buy Euro, I have to sell US dollars. That's very important to understand, okay? So imagine in my first case, I'm an investor and I want, for several reasons, I want to own, I want to buy US dollars. In this case, as I just said, if I want to buy US dollars, I have to sell Euro to buy US dollars, right? It's a trade. What does it mean? It means um, that if I'm buying US dollars, the US dollar demand is going up, which means that the, the, we will call it a stronger US dollar. And on the other side, if you have a stronger US dollar, it's always the counterbalance, it weakens the Euro. So what does it mean exactly? So right now, for one US dollar, I get 84 cents, okay, euro cents. Now that my demand is going up because uh, I want to have more US dollars, that means that I have a stronger US dollar. 
So uh, in exchange, I get more euros for that, okay? Because my dollar is, is stronger. Now imagine if I have 100 US dollars, instead of get, uh, getting 84 euros, I get 90 euros, okay? I get more in exchange in euros because the, the uh, US dollar is stronger right now, okay? Because the demand for dollars is stronger. As you just saw, there, there was a cut before <laughs> and I had to change the numbers because I made a little mistake in my head. Now all the numbers are correct. So uh, a quick tip, maybe write it down all the time because it's kind of confusing and tricky. So make sure um, to, to get the math right. <laughs> On the other side, the second example, imagine here, I'm an investor and I want to buy euros because let's say I want to own uh, European stocks, for example, or I want to uh, uh, invest in Europe. Okay. In this case, as an investor, I have to sell US dollars to buy euros. Again, it's a trade, okay? So in this case, because I'm buying euros, um, the demand for euros is going up, which means I will have a stronger euro, okay? And what does it mean? Otherwise, the counterbalance, a stronger euro means a weaker US dollar. So what does it mean in my example? Again, uh, if I'm starting for one US dollar equals 84 euro cents, now the US dollar got weaker because my euro is stronger. So what does it mean if I have a weaker US dollar? Well, it means that I get less in exchange, okay? For, for, for one US dollar, or let's say for 100 US dollars, I got 84 euros before the, the demand increase of the euro. And now that the, the euro is stronger uh, for one of or for 100 US dollars, I'm not getting 84 euros, but I'm getting 79 euros. So I get less in exchange, okay, because I have a weaker US dollar. We have talked about the main reason, which was supply and demand, and how it affects uh, currencies versus the other one. Let's talk about the reasons why supply and demand can change. The first reason is political and economical environmental changes, let's put it like this. Um, what investors are always looking at when they want to buy or sell a currency, especially when, when they want to hold a currency is, is the country stable? Uh, is the pol are the politics stable? Is the economical environment stable? And is there a good outcome for growth? In other words, is the country growing in the, in the, near, in the near future or not? Okay, now let's Take the example of the worldwide crisis, um, for example, the pandemic here. What happened, especially at the beginning of the pandemic? Well, every investor wanted to buy US dollar, which means sell other currencies. Why? Because in, in a big crisis, every investor goes to the US dollar market. Okay, This is the, the, the deepest market, the safest market, the most stable market. And um, it, it's just about trust at some point, okay? So everybody trusts the US when it comes to especially the currency. And don't forget that US dollars are the main currency in the world. About 70 or 80% of the transactions in the world are made in US dollars. So especially in a crisis, you want to make sure to have enough US dollars to buy oil and to buy all, all, all different kind of commodities that will help uh, you as an investor, okay? So in this case, what does it mean? In a worldwide crisis, when everybody wants to own and buy US dollars and therefore sell other currencies, well, it means that if you buy US dollars, of course, you, uh, the demand for US dollars is getting stronger. So you have a stronger US dollar. And this means, again, in my example, uh, before this happened, actually for one US dollar, I got 84 euro cents. Now that we have a stronger dollar, of course, for one US dollar, I get more in exchange. So instead of getting 84 euro cents, I get 90 euro cents. I get more in exchange because of a stronger dollar. On the other side, imagine we have a US, a, a weak US economy. And let's say Europe and China and all the others are in a better shape right now. Imagine, okay? That means that as an investor, well, I want to get rid of my US dollars to buy other currencies in the countries which are maybe more stable or more with a better growth outcome, okay? So in this case, if I sell my US dollars, it means that I'm weakening my US dollar in this case. 
So again, to give you this example here, uh, if my US dollar, if for one US dollar I got 84 euro cents, now that my US dollar is weaker, um, instead of getting 84 euro cents, I only get 79 euro cents because I get less in return because of a weaker US dollar. The reason I want to talk about is the central bank's action and how the central bank influences the supply and demand of money which means of course uh, supply and demand as I explained it at the beginning will have an impact if uh, on the exchange rate of course so now let's quickly look at it imagine the US central bank the Federal Reserve this is the institution in every country that controls the monetary policy okay um, in other words not only domestically but of course also internationally because if uh, you twist something uh, related to the US dollar, it has a huge impact related uh, to the cu currency situation compared to the euro, for example, or uh, the, the Chinese money, for example. Okay, so um, what does it mean monetary policy? Well, we have two things that are very important. On the one hand side, the central bank controls the amount of money which is in the cir circulation. And on the other side, the central bank also controls the interest rates. Everything is a bit complicated, so I will try to keep it as simple as possible um, by starting with the control of supply, okay? As I just mentioned, the central bank controls the amount of US dollars which are in the circulation, if it's the Federal Reserve, for example. Uh, and usually, especially in crisis times, the Federal Reserve loves to use quantitative easing, which means basically they can print money virtually, right? Okay. So what does it mean? Of course, if you print money in the US, it means that, of course, more US dollars are on the market because you just uh, increased the supply of US dollars by creating new US dollars, okay? So what does it mean for, for the, the currency situation? Well, in this case, imagine my demand for US dollars is still the same, but the supply has increased because I, uh, the central bank pumped more money into the circulation. Well, it means that the price will drop. What does it mean uh, for my US dollar? Well, it means that I will have a weaker US dollar because I have more supply. I have a bigger amount of US dollars, okay? Uh, which, which weakens the demand, obviously, okay? So we have a weaker US dollar. In other words, it means that for one US dollar, if I want to sell it, I get less in exchange, okay? Again, that, that was the situ situation we talked about earlier. Now let's look at the second branch of the central bank, which is uh, they can change the interest rates. So that, that sounds like, well, what's the relationship between interest rates and uh, currency? Well, you see there is a pretty massive impact. Imagine companies, uh, imagine the country is doing well, uh, we are out of the pandemic, everybody's vaccinated and stuff like that. And at some point, um, the, to cool the temperature uh, of, the, of the economy, the central banks will increase the interest rates okay, in the US. What does it mean? Well, it means that if, if now as a global investor I can get higher interest rates in the US because the government or the, the Federal Reserve has increased the interest rate, well, it means that I want to buy US dollars. In other words, the US dollar demand will increase what does it mean? It means a stronger US dollar. In other words, for one US dollar, you get more uh, currency, uh, more euros, for example. The, the, the opposite happens if the central bank, for example, in the US, reduces the interest rates. Can be due to a pandemic, but it can also be due to high inflation. Imagine um, the economy is overheating, I have high inflation, prices are going up too too high so to put the brakes on it the central bank decides to reduce the the interest rates what does it mean well usually it shows kind of an, a sign of instability and as i just mentioned earlier investors don't like instability in a country so uh, if the interest rates are going down it's kind of a sign of an unstable of unstable times coming up that means that in this case, it's gonna weaker the US dollar, okay? 
So now <laughs> that we have talked about all these things, and currencies are pretty complicated to understand, I try to make it as easy as possible. As you can see, there are a lot of different factors um, coming into consideration. I hope I was helpful. <laughs> If, if I was helpful, make sure to like this video, make sure to subscribe to this channel. I post market finance, corporate finance videos every Sunday. So if you like that kind of stuff, if you want to smart up your game in finance, make sure to subscribe. It takes me about 6-7 hours to produce each video, so don't forget the like button. <laughs> Otherwise, enjoy your week, stay safe, stay smart. Bye bye guys.